Good afternoon. My name is Barbara Velasquez. It is my pleasure to welcome you back to Metropolitan Community College. The academic term break ended last week. We are fully into the spring academic term and today's presentation begins our Women's History Month celebration. Women's History Month had its origins as a national celebration in 1981 when Congress authorized the week beginning March 7th, 1982 as Women's History Week. Later, Congress designated this the month of March 1987 as Women's History Month. And since 1995, presidents have issued a series of annual proclamations designated the month of March as Women's History Month, celebrating the contributions women have made to the United States and recognizing the specific achievements women have made over the course of American history in a variety of fields. The 2021 national theme for Women's History Month is Refusing to be Silenced. Your, your microphones will be turned off during the presentation. But at any time during the presentation, you may send questions via the chat to moderator Barbara Velasquez for consideration during the Q&A period. We ask you to please complete the online evaluation and name and contact information to be considered for year long recognition. The online address will be on a slide at the end of the program and also in the chat. It is mccneb.edu slash IIEEVAL. Please welcome Ms. Avery Sanders, who will introduce today's speaker. Good afternoon, everyone. Can everyone hear me okay? Okay. Um, well, I am Avery Sanders. I'm Terry's daughter. And uh, Terry D. Sanders is the publisher of the Omaha Star newspaper, a bi-weekly community newspaper. She is a communicator with a passion for moving the needle forward in her community. She also serves a dual role as the executive director of the Mildred D. Brown Memorial Study Center, a 501c3 organization, that which a junior journalism promoting the profession of journalism to high school students, higher education scholarships, archiving of the Omaha Star, and publishing the Omaha Star newspaper. The Omaha Star was started by Mildred D. Brown, an African-American woman, 83 years ago, and the only paper of its kind in the state. The Omaha Star has never missed a publishing, publishing of the paper since 1938. Sanders is also the former executive director of the Great Plains Black History Museum. She's been credited with raising the Great Plains Black History Museum, an African-American museum, from a 20-year inactivity to a thriving museum, noted in the Midwest for documenting the contributions of African-Americans in the Great Plains of our country. She was the initial site manager for the Fair Deal Fair Deal Village Marketplace, a retail opportunity that includes a grocery store, a restaurant, 10 shopping containers that house eight businesses. The marketplace is a $2.4 million economic development project by the Omaha Economic Development Corporation in the North Omaha community. She is an award-winning serial entrepreneur from the Omaha Chamber of Chamber Minority Business of the Year. She has also had businesses that have spanned over 35 years from being a seamstress, certified balloon artist, wedding planner, event management, and personal catering. The mother of three outstanding adults, one of whom I'm which, Daniel II, who is the owner of Two and Two Contracting LLC, Simone D. Sanders, who is the senior spokesperson for Vice President Kamala Harris, and myself, Avery Sanders, who is a prof hospitality professional. She was married to my late father, Daniel Sanders, for 37 years before his death in 2017. Terry loves to travel and contributing to the fabric of her community. Please welcome my mother, Ms. Terry D. Sanders, as she presents Media Mavens, Women in Media Past and Present. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you to MCC for asking me to present on the subject of women in media, past and present. And I have entitled this Media Mavens. 
so that we're all operating on the same um, definitions, media can be print, it can be magazines, it can be television, or it can be radio. And even today, it can be social media. And let's define Maven. That's a favorite word of mine. Maven is someone with a particular expertise in a subject. So today we're going to be talking about women who have an expertise in the subject of media. Next. So as early as 1693, the first women's magazine was published. It only ran four issues, but that is pretty amazing. The year 1800, Baroness Frederica Charlotte Riddell publishes her account of the American Revolution. Wow. That was something I didn't know. And now we go to Mary Ann Shad Carey, who lived from 1823 to 1893. And she was the first female African-American newspaper editor in 1853. She edited an anti-slavery newspaper in Canada. And in 1858, the paper failed because of an economic decline. And she was the second African-American to graduate from law school. And she, at that time, was 60 years old. Next slide. And in 1825, Annie Newport Royal was the first woman to interview the US President John Quincy Adams. Next slide. And in 1848, Margaret Fuller was the first female war correspondent. Ladies were busy even back in the 1600s. Next slide. Ida B. Wells Barnett was one of the first American women to keep her name after marriage. She was a journalist and an activist known for her campaigning and writing against anti-lynching. She was the daughter of slaves. She was an advocate for African-American justice, Miss Ida B. Wells. And just as a side note, Ida B. Wells was also on a stamp and has come to um, our attention even lately in 2021. Angelina Well Grimke, she was a writer in the Harlem Renaissance, a journalist, a teacher, a poet, and a playwright. Her father was the second African-American to graduate from the Harvard Law School. She also wrote for The Crisis, which is a publication of the NAACP. Next slide. Mrs. Ethel Payne. She was known as the first lady of the black press. She wrote for the Chicago Defender in Washington, DC in 1953. And she too was a granddaughter of slaves. She was the first African-American international correspondent for the CBS channel in 1972, she had a reputation as being an aggressive journalist. Next slide. The next person we're gonna talk about is Daisy Bates. Daisy Bates, as you can see in that top picture, was one of the Little Rock Nine who integrated the Little Rock High School back in the day. She was the president of the NAACP Arkansas branch and married a journalist. They invested in the Arkansas State Press in 1942 and an advertising boycott took their paper down. And it was due to a story that they covered of a police killing of an African-American soldier. But they did a campaign as a statewide circulation campaign to restore the paper to financial viability. So it can be done. That was Ms. Daisy Bates. Next slide. And this is who shoulders I stand on. A local Omaha media maven, Mrs. Mildred D. Brown, who was the founder of the Omaha Star newspaper. And I'm gonna just sit right there a minute and talk about Mrs. Brown. She came from Bessemer, Alabama. She was trained as a teacher. She worked in the Des Moines area for a newspaper in advertising. And she and her husband, Gilbert, moved to Omaha and worked for a competing paper, they decided in 1938 to publish the Omaha Star newspaper, which still runs today. We have never missed a publication. 
and Mrs. Brown stated in the Omaha Star served, has been serving our community for over 80 years. And the Omaha Star is dedicated to the service of the people that no good cause shall lack a champion and that evil shall never go unopposed. And the Omaha Star is the oldest black newspaper in the state of Nebraska. The Omaha Star is a bi-weekly newspaper and we are very proud of all of our accomplishments here at the Omaha Star. Next slide. In 1951, Margaret Higgins becomes the first woman to win the Pulitzer Prize for international reporting. Next slide. Kathy Woods Hughes, who was born in 1947, and the Howard University School of Journalism is named for Kathy Hughes. But the real scoop on her is that she is a native Omahaan who got her start right here at the Omaha Star. She's the founder and chairperson of Urban One, which was formerly Radio One and TV One, the largest black owned broadcast company in the nation. She is a graduate of Duchenne Academy here in Omaha. Now, something you need to know about Kathy is when she went to Washington, D.C., back in the 70s, she applied to work at the Howard University radio station. Well, back then, there was not a lot of Internet. And when they read that she graduated from Duchenne Academy, they automatically thought that that was a university in Omaha and had no idea that she had taken some classes at UNO, but she actually graduated from high school. And that's what Duchenne Academy was. Kathy has had many accolades and her start at the Omaha Star um, began in advertising. And Kathy is now in the Washington DC area. And what you need to know, her son has succeeded her in the Urban One Media area, but she took a page from Mildred Brown's book. If you have ever visited the Omaha Star, I am always happy to take you to the back room. The back room was actually an apartment that Mildred Brown lived in while she was publisher of the paper. And Kathy did the same thing in Washington, DC and lived in an apartment that also housed her radio station. And one night some funders did not believe that she lived there. And they came by the radio station and she answered the door with curlers and a robe. On. And that time on, she had no more trouble with funding because they believed what she said she did, which was lived in the radio station, she and her son. Next slide. In 1965, Helly Gurley Brown became the first editor and chief of Cosmopolitan Magazine. Next slide. And in 1972, the magazine began. Ms. Magazine began publishing to turn a movement into a magazine. In 1976, Barbara Walters became the first news anchor on network television, NBC. And in 1978, there was a lawsuit, Boylan versus New York Times, a landmark case for female journalists, allowing women to promote women promotions and opportunities in network news. The next slide. Well, if we don't see that on the screen, it refers to myself as an Omaha media maven. I took over the Omaha Star as a publisher in 2020. And it has been my pleasure to stand on the shoulders of a person such as Mrs. Mildred Brown in publishing the Omaha Star. We have reinstituted some things Ms. Brown started being family of the week and to show more photographs of people within our community. We also cover national and international news. The piece that I like most about being the publisher of the Omaha Star is it allows me to work in my community. You need to know that the paper was purchased in 2019 by the Mildred D. Brown Memorial Study Center. The Study Center is a 501c3 nonprofit organization, and the Omaha Star is a program of the Study Center. 
So it is a for-profit organization, organization owned by a nonprofit organization, which is coming to fruition in many other areas. Next slide. This slide is of the 19th. And the 19th is an organization that came to fruition in 2020. This is named after the 19th Amendment, which gave women the right to vote in the United States. This too is a nonprofit organization that is women-led, as you can see, and they report on the news for and by women. The asterisk in the name is, refers to that there is still work to be done on the behalf of women in the media. Next slide. This is President Biden's press team in 2021. So we have gone from the 1600s to the current year. And in 2021, President Biden named his press team and it is an all female press team. Yay, go girls, black girls rock and so do women in the press. Please note that the women, the woman in the middle of this slide that's holding the microphone happens to be my daughter, Simone. And we are very proud of her here in Omaha for the accolades that she has done as far as the media and representing our country. And she is the senior spokesperson for Vice President Kamala Harris. And those are uh, taking a look at women in the media over the years. I will be glad to entertain questions. Uh, I want to tell you a little bit more about the Omaha Star newspaper because that is my passion. After having worked um, with the Omaha Economic Development Corporation at the Fair Deal Village Marketplace and having been the executive director of the Great Plains Black History Museum and being an integral part from bringing it out of a 20 year hiatus in our community, I learned a lot about um, our community and about the history of our community and about the history of 20, the 24th Street Corridor and exactly what that means. I always refer people to a documentary by Mrs. Camille Steed, and it is called A, uh, not the, A, uh, A, Street of Dreams. And if you take a look at that, that will give you insight into what North 24th Street used to be, how uh, Mrs. Brown interacted with the community, how she was an integral part of the Decorus Club. She represented the United States uh, she met with presidents, she met with presidential candidates, and she was just an all around real lady. Her signature was wearing a three flower white carnation corsage. And she traveled with those corsages and she wore a fresh one every day. And Metro's own Dr. Amy Force wrote a book on Mrs. Brown. It's called Black Ink and a White Carnation. And she also has a children's book on butter brickle ice cream, which was Mrs. Brown's favorite ice cream. And little did I know that, but that is also my favorite ice cream. So I'm proud about that. But I stand on very, very tall shoulders. Um, and the legacy that Mrs. Brown led, left. Now the Omaha Star, I am its fifth publisher and that, means that the Omaha Star has always had female publishers. After Mrs. Brown was her niece, Dr. Margarita Washington, then was Mrs. Phyllis Hicks, and most recently was Mrs. Frankie Jean Williams. And I came after Mrs. Williams. And this is a labor of love. Uh, we are part of the NNA, which has been now Newspaper Publishers Association, which is located in Washington, D.C., and that was established over 80 years ago. And Mrs. Brown, one of two females that was at the table at that time when this organization started. Organization represents Black newspapers all over the country. And there's also an arm of newspapers that represents 
of the NNPA that represents the Latino uh, newspaper publishers. The Omaha Star is a staple. We are located at 2216 North 24th Street, and the paper is in a historic building, which means the building is on the National Historic Register, and the interior of the building or our offices are part of the Douglas County Landmark, which is also a historical register locally. So we are very proud of that. We invite you to come down. We also invite you to take out a newspaper uh, subscription with the Omaha Star. And we have a campaign going on right now where we would like to get Mrs. Brown's picture on a US postage stamp. So stay tuned to hear more about that. Uh, Ethel Payne was on a postage stamp as was um, some other famous female black journalist. And so we encourage, encourage, encourage. When this campaign rolls out, we would love to have you support it. One thing that you will notice over the time frame that I shared with you that women have always been in the media. 93, the first woman's magazine had four issues, but that was the 19th Amendment also. You need to understand, or we should understand and appreciate the contributions of women over the years in media. And I ask you again, are there any questions, Bob and Barb in the chat? Yes, uh, we do. I can't bring it up. Terry, um, we have someone asking if you can get a subscription to the Omaha Star if you live outside Nebraska. And if so, how would they go about that? Go to our website and there you can take out a home delivery subscription or you can get a digital subscription. So it is available to people who live outside of Omaha. As a matter of fact, we have quite a few subscribers who are former Omaha residents that subscribe to the paper. Excellent. Terry, how did you prepare yourself for your career with the Omaha Star for those who might have an interest in working with the newspaper? So Personally, I attended Creighton University and I have a degree in journalism. My emphasis in, is in public relations, but of course we all know if you're in journalism, you get to write and take a lot of pictures. Uh, the Omaha Star has a program called Junior Journalism and we also have room for interns within our offices to be able to write, to be able to do photographs, um, to do some editing. I would suggest that you contact me at publisher at Omaha Star INC. That's publisher at Omaha Star Inc.com and send me your interest. We are also on social media. We are on Facebook. We have an Omaha Star group. We have the Omaha Star newspaper. And then we also have the Mildred D. Brown Memorial Study Center Facebook page. We are on Twitter. We're real proud of that and we tweet a lot. And our handle is at the Omaha Star, and we're on Instagram as well. So there are lots of ways to get in contact with us and to find out what is going on. Um, our social media is very active, and we post most items on our social media that we are sharing. This summer, um we are looking for interns we have a very active archiving department where we are digitally archiving the omaha star newspaper now what does that mean that means that there are pictures um, and copies of the newspaper that we have digitized in our office and if you send us a request then we can provide you uh let's say your grandmother was in the paper in 1942 and you give us your grandmother's name and we um, run what's called OCR and it shows every paper that your grandmother's name appeared in. And then we would be glad to print that off for you for a small fee and share that with you for your family archives. And we have had people contact us about obituaries. 
um, and different items for people in the start. So we encourage that. And this summer we will have interns. We're looking for college interns to work with that program with the Omaha Star. More questions, Barb? Yes, thank you to the audience for sending your questions in. We have one that is very timely. Considering the pandemic, how could you get a tour of the Omaha Star today or now? Well, if you, if you wear a mask, we will let you in. We are, we are cognizant of the pan pandemic and we um, follow social distancing and wear a mask, wash your hands and be safe. So you can give our office a call at 402-346-4041 to schedule that. Now you, you're just reminding me. Next question. Is the Omaha Star, uh, how are they participating in encouraging people? Um, we encourage people to be vaccinated. And from what I understand, the president says that vaccinations will be open for everybody May 1st. So we, um, our advertisers, Charles Drew Health Center, is a center that you can call and see, do they have vac vaccinations available? That is actually where I got my vaccination from was through Charles Drew Health Center. But there are many places, the um, pharmacy outlets will also be having vaccinations available. Excellent, so we'll be watching the Omaha Star for more information on that. Tell us how yes. the Star is cultivating the next generation of journalists and publishers? So I always say that not a professor that I'm not a success here. So our junior journalism program, our intern program that we have through the colleges and universities, and we also accept articles from people and publish them. And if you submit an article, you can have a, a byline with us. And anyone in the publishing world knows that bylines are like gold when you go to look for another job in publishing. So we encourage you to submit articles. Um, and one thing about the Omaha Star in that we publish the good news, that means that if your little sister just wrote a book and she's 12 years old, we would publish that in the Omaha Star. You are not likely to see that in the Omaha World Herald. Um, you get a scholarship to attend a university. Again, you are not likely to see that in the, in the national papers or on the national news, but that is front page information for the Omaha Star. And any community news you have, church news, family news, we're always looking for someone to volunteer to be family of the week. This week's publication has um, two families from our archives. And you can see how clear our archives are based on the pictures that you see in the current paper, which we just got finished with today. So it will be on the newsstand this afternoon and tomorrow. And we, if I didn't mention it before, we are a bi-weekly newspaper, which means we publish every two weeks. The Omaha Star started as a weekly newspaper but due to cost, we went to a bi-weekly format several years ago. I would love to take it back to weekly because I think that that is how you get your news through the Omaha Star every week. We have a question. Therefore, does the Omaha Star mainly publish local news or is the focus on both national and local? The focus is on both local and national news. Um, we, of course, get local news, uh, news from schools, as I say, community news, but we also subscribe to the NNPA and from time to time, we republish stories that the NNPA journalists have written and we do go out uh, and get national stories on our own as well. Thank you. Looking back into the history, Ms. Sanders, 
Uh, Mildred Brown, of course, um, is someone that you've had a chance to tell us quite a bit about. Is there somebody else in your research that really um, served as an, um, a beacon for you or, or you believe that there's a lot to learn from that individual? I believe that there's a lot to learn from Ida B. Wells Barnett. She was an advocate for um, an activist known for her policies on anti-lynching. And that got her into trouble sometimes, excuse me, allergies. That got her into trouble sometimes. And thank you, her campaigning and her writings on anti-lynching, she went throughout the South writing about that. And you can imagine that was not a popular subject. And as I looked and studied the history on journalists, our, the journalism history and women in journalism has really come full circle. And we are now to some in journalism with reporting, with reporting um, news that is accurate, with, um, we have a lot of female journalists on the scene. If you look at your national, your CNNs and your MSNBCs, uh, female journalists are well represented, but that has not always been the case. When we look at the year that Barbara Walters got to be a national person, that was 1976, the year of our centennial, uh, bicentennial, I'm sorry. That was not that long ago. And I remember as a little girl watching Barbara Walters and just being fascinated because you didn't see that many women on TV. Of course, now you have uh, Robin Roberts, you have Katie Couric, uh, you have Rachel Maddow. And so women are well represented, but that has not always been the case. And it is always a fight um, to be recognized and to be valued for the stories that you write and the opinions that you give. We do have a question about whether the Omaha Star offers international news. Yes, um, we scan the byways and highways looking for news and international news of course is uh, accepted here at the Omaha Star. If you remember when George Floyd was murdered and it was quite a news story that even people in the in England and the United Kingdom protested just as we did in this country. And that is international news. And that was a story that rang around the world um, on his behalf. And as his young daughter said, my daddy made the news. And he was, her comment was, and he's going to change the world. And I think that that was a very, very accurate statement on her behalf about her father. So yes, we do do international news. And now that um, we have President number 46, 47, 46, President number 46, President Biden, we will certainly cover more of that kind of news because it won't be quote unquote fake news but it'll be the real deal. Thank you very much. Encourage, I want to encourage audience members to keep sending your great questions. Terry, uh, can you um, tell what kind of challenges local newspapers are up against, especially small? One of the things we're up against is the pandemic. Um, when I took over the paper in February, then the pandemic was made public in March. Wow. So that meant that some of our advertisers pulled out and, and advertising is the lifeblood of a newspaper. That is where you make most of your money. Now, of course, we have a subscriber base so that is another area um, where we 
get revenues. But you face the pandemic, so now stories that you might go to, you don't go to anymore. Uh, when I was shooting Family of the Week in the beginning of the pandemic, I promised everybody that they could come outside on their porch to take their picture. And I would stand at one end of the yard and they could stand at the other. And so that was a challenge. Um, the activity of people, of course, has decreased over time. And now, um, you know, people are getting vaccinations and there are areas of our country that are opening up and people are traveling more, but we still have to wear masks. We still should social distance and please, please, please still wash your hands. And so that has been the challenge of a smaller newspaper. I think I gave you um, the example with Daisy Bates in Arkansas where their paper closed almost or was on the brink of closing due to a story that was reported and they had advertisers boycott. Uh, the experience here at the Omaha Star has been that the Omaha Star has caused people to boycott businesses and brought about change. Um, two examples I can think of, one was with the OCB bus line, which was the Omaha Council Bluffs bus line, 1955. It was before Rosa Parks sat down at the at the front of the bus. They would not hire um, black bus drivers. And so the way that the community picketed or boycotted, they paid the bus line with pennies. And at that time, the bus cost 18 cents to ride. And the key to that was it didn't go into some automatic counter. You dropped it into that little change box. And at the we lost you for a moment. You were telling us about the bus behind uh -huh, the 18 cents. Yes. So the bus driver was responsible for counting his fare every night. Can you imagine if you had maybe the bus during the day that you had to count 18 pennies for each of those 200 people? That quickly turned itself around and hiring practices were changed. Um, the other boycott that I can point to was Reed Ice Cream, which was a local ice cream manufacturer. And the fact that they would not hire black drivers for their ice cream delivery trucks, but um, the boycott was, and they actually picketed the Reed plant, which was located at 24th and Worth Street. And they said, we were good enough to drive the tanks back in the wartime, but we're not good enough to drive the trucks. And again, that was turned around. Uh, boycotting is nothing new. Protest new. And if we look at our history, we can see what was done and what was accomplished. And recently we've had low boycott and we have had they have been affected. So don't lose um, peaceful protests are a good thing. More questions, Barb? There's some great questions coming in and they're varied. Do you see gentrification occurring on the north side? If so, do you see this positively or negatively impacting women in general and with the paper as it is today? So I'm going to define gentrification, or at least the definition that I move, that I use. Gentrification is when a neighborhood is blighted, a developer comes in, buys the property, and then redevelops it, and who originally inhabited that property can no longer live there. That is the working definition for me for gentrification. And I can't say that um, there was a, there's a lot of gentrification here. Yes, there's some, and houses have been rebuilt and things have been redone, but um, the, 
the um sorry about that someone came in the office but the newspaper has not suffered any from the gentrification process we are still around what one of the things that i found interesting is that's it one of the things that i found interesting was that the population in omaha is almost 500,000 people and the uh, population for african americans in this city is about 12 percent and i see somebody here that is a math whiz i am not so i'm not gonna do those numbers but um if the omaha star had even 10 percent of the African American population and population in general subscribing to the paper, what a success that would make for us. And we um, report to our advertisers. And the reason people advertise with us is because of our subscribers. So I would like to encourage people to subscribe, but I do not feel as though gentrification has had an effect on paper but certainly it has had an effect in the neighborhoods okay um being in a red state what has been what have been some of the issues as you work with a progressive newspaper he is always submitting articles. We have to refuse articles if we do not feel that they fit the um, fabric of our paper. Very seldom do I do that. Um, we, we want to publish all news to give us a well-rounded perspective for what is going on locally, nationally, and internationally. Uh, being a red state, that means that we are Republican, although Omaha represents the blue dot. And we face some issues. Um, I'll go toward the pandemic for now, where our governor in other states, you can, I'll give the example of the state of Alaska. Alaska, anyone 18 or over can get a COVID shot. Here, you have to be 65 or over. Initially, you had to be five years old. Well, that's a problem. If you're not 65 and you have a public facing job or you want to travel, you have to wait until you reach that age. And our governor um, has opened up the state and you can see him in places with no mask and with a group of people. They tell you currently that you still need to maintain um, that social distancing, wearing a mask and washing your hands. COVID is by no means over. Everybody does not have a vaccination. And the word on the street is a vaccination will keep you from dying from COVID, but it may not keep you from um, catching COVID. It's kind of like flu shot. So that is a challenge here with us, um, being in a red state and being a blue dot. It's there, it exists. And we try to deal with it. We try to bring um, our subscribers and our readers a, a even playing field of news. We are nonpartisan, so we don't say we're Republican or we're Democrat but we do bring an even field of news to the people that read the Omaha Star. Okay, moving in another direction related to media. Do you think there is more or less coverage of violence against women of color in the news and general media? Personal opinion. I think that there is less coverage on women of color and violence in the media. The recent incident that happened in Atlanta, um, the media was hesitant to say who was affected. They were hesitant to say 
that those were Asian owned businesses. They were very hesitant to bring those details out, which in my opinion were important. And the stations that I saw had all male report. And I found that interesting. And even um, many times news about women is minimized. It is not at the top of the charts for reporting. And it might even be on second or third page when it is front page information. So yes, I do agree that um, news about violence against women, and let's face it, we're in a male dominated society. And so that has a lot to do with it. And one of the things about the 19th Amendment organization, they bring those things front and center. And that is um, the nice thing about having an organization such as the 19th Amendment, that they bring those stories to light and because they are national in scope, they're always on the front lines. And I am a person that watches a lot of the national um, news and they are always guests on those uh, national news programs. So we're gonna wind down here, but uh, as a final question, how can we, you've given us some ideas, but I'd like to know if there's some more ways that this community can support the Omaha Star. So I want to say that the Omaha Star being part of a 501c3, any donation that you make to the newspaper in the newspaper's name, because we're a program of a 501c3 would be tax deductible. We, um, are always looking for student writers. We're always looking for news stories, not just from students, but from, I call seasoned people too. Um, and we love for a picture to go along with a story. Just recently, Love's Jazz um, has taken a different direction and a gentleman is going to be providing music lessons and he is a professional drummer has been a jazz drummer. His name is Dana Murray. And so that um, organization that is now running the Love Jazz Center is the VID, 24th Street Business Improvement District. And um, they submitted a story to about that. And then I scoured to get um, a picture of Mr. Murray that was not a I call a studio picture of him, you know, against a backdrop, but him actually with his drums. So the people understood who he was because one thing about it, a, a picture tells a thousand words. So if you never read the story, you would at least know he's a drummer and you would know a little bit more about him. And that's why I always urge a photo to go with the story because we are not, um, avid readers. There used to be a time when we were, but I know people will skim the paper, see a picture, and then maybe read it if the picture is compelling enough. So that is a piece and a part of it. We've, we've got to do that. And so other ways that you can contribute to the Omaha Star, um, on the Thursday before the paper comes out, we have a paper folding marathon here. So we have, we have about a, a thousand papers that go into the mail system, M-A-I-L, um, to be sent to our subscribers, both in town and out of town. And the paper is printed at another facility. We do not print the paper here, we never have. And the paper is sent to us folded in half. Well, the paper has to be quarter folded in order to go to the post office. And guess what that means? That myself, the staff and several volunteers come down to fold those papers so that they can go in. Huh? I'm on the phone. Oh, okay. So that they can go into the mail and be sent out and you can receive them at your home. Um, our archiving project 
I encourage people if they are doing genealogy and researching their family tree, let us know who you're looking for. Maybe they were featured in Omaha Star at one time or another. The archiving project is ongoing as we are getting our digitizing. I think we have from 1942 to 1958 so far that we have on um, hard drive and we are continuously sending in more papers to be digitized. Now we do have uh, at the Omaha Public Library, the Omaha Star has been archived on microfiche. Some people don't even know what microfiche is. The pictures are not very clear and the lettering is pretty blurry. But as you can see from any papers that we have published from our archives recently, your grandmother could recognize you without her glasses. The pictures are just that clear. So we ask you to, if you're doing genealogy projects or even if uh, you're looking for a certain picture from a certain era, no doubt it was published in the Omaha Star. And so we would be glad to go through that and um, provide you with that resource. One of the new things that's coming up in the second quarter of this year, we're going to open up Omaha Star Printing and Publishing. What is that? There is not a copy machine available for public use um, between Cummings and Fort and 16th and 72nd. Kinko's or Office Depot is on Dodge. And so where do students get their papers copied? Where can they get them bound into booklets? Where can small business get those things done, get um, business cards printed? Now you will be able, after the second week in April, you will be able to come to the Omaha Star and get those services. We will have professional copying and printing services available. Uh, watch our website, watch our social media for the grand opening of that service and for what you will be able to get. And we will also have retail available. So we will have calendars available and planners that feature uh, uh, stories and images from our archives. Um, let's say, I know back in the day, our church did what was called a birth dated calendar. And it was a calendar that was printed and you paid a dollar and people got their birthdays on the calendar. And then the people purchased the calendar and you got a calendar full of the parishioners birthdays. Well, we are looking to have graphic designers um, that are students on staff so that they can design those items for you and you can get that. What about um, graduation invitations? What about planner pads? What about notepads, the kind that are gummed across the top that you just rip the sheet off and you have a sheet of paper? We will be doing all of that here at the Omaha Star. And we will be training students to assist us with this business endeavor. And again, entrepreneurship, economic development within our community. We feel very strongly about that. And we want to be a part of the economic fabric that exists in our community. So that is something new coming up and we invite you to be a part and to take part. Barb, I don't see you. Oh, can you see me again? No, but go ahead. I hear you. <laughs> That's what's important. I think uh, you have provided some really great ideas for people to consider how to support local um, newspapers. Um, we did get a super question in that we will finish with this time, and it, it was kind uh -oh. of a um, What advice would you give to a young journalism student? Um, read. That's first and foremost. You need to read, and you need to read everything. Do not let the television be your sole source of news. That's not a good idea. And of course, get a subscription to the Omaha Star. Uh, provide us with some stories. We provide scholarships and there is a scholarship at Metropolitan Community College in the name of the Omaha Star, as well as we have um, general scholarships that are available to students. 
And one of our scholars um, who graduates from Hampton this year, when she came home at the break at Christmas, she told me she was not returning. And so she writes a column for us from the vantage point of a college girl. And we've had people write on politics. Um, we've had people write about local personalities. And we've also had people write about entrepreneurs within our community. So as a young person, a budding journalist, I'll call it, please write. Uh, journaling is considered writing. It's not only writing for the Omaha Star. Um, blogging is considered writing. All of those can be considered samples of your writing when you apply to school, when you go for that full-time job. All of those qualify. So I would say write, write, and more write. I am a person who likes a good pen and I love a fountain pen with that flowing ink. Write, just write. Um, there is a lady that lives in, and she told me that her mother was a journalist. And so she is going to donate um, some of her mother's typewriters to us. So we will also be museum-ish, if I can say that. Um, with some artifacts. So we are looking forward to being here. We've been here over 80 years and we are looking forward to 80 more. I may not be sitting in this seat, but somebody will be because we have deemed that the Omaha Star is a success. Siri, you've shared with us that uh, Omaha has produced many media mavens. And I yes. get your advice uh, can help us to have some future media mavens. And I'm positive that there are faculty who are out there who are so delighted that you encourage writing. Um, so, and, and for yes. us to think about writing, it can be done in so many ways, right? So um, thank you so very much. Um, we appreciate the time you've given us today. I know you have newspapers that need to be folded. <laughs> <laughs> We're all done for today. Okay. But I thank you for this opportunity to share about the history of women in media, those media mavens, to share about the history of the Omaha Star, and to learn a little bit more about North Omaha and how you too can contribute to the fabric of our community. Thank you so much. Um, thank you. Now I'll ask Posey, please, would you put up our slide for uh, and one more reminder on doing that evaluation, mccneb.edu slash I-I-E-E-V-A-L. We watch to see who's completing them so that we can reward you for your continued participation. Keep that in mind. And then our final slide will promote the next Women's History Month program, which is on Monday, March 22nd at 2.30 again, Inspiring Latinas, Changing the Narrative in American Culture. We'll be delighted to welcome Sylvia Mendoza from California, who is going to share with us on that afternoon, and we hope you can join us. Remember that all of the Women's History Month programming can be found at mccneb.edu slash women's history. Everybody have a nice evening.